here we are, folks. Mad Max Fury Road, the final film in the franchise to date. Uh, I mean, fun fact about this. My father took me to see Mad Max Fury Road when it came out during finals week when I was in high school. And I was amazed by it. And I still am. And But here's the thing, though. I had never seen any of the prior Mad Max movies. And I gotta say, now that I've gotten to go through them, I'm glad I have. They, I mean, Mad Max Fury Road is still my favorite, but I will say I am, it is impressive to see just how far the Mad Max series has come from, from being like a just barely, barely, you know, low budget action series with a budget less than that of an A24 movie to a full blown, you know, triple million dollar blockbuster. It's amazing how far this franchise has come. So yeah, so let's talk about it. So yeah, like I said, it's Mad Max Fury Road, directed once again by George Miller and starring Tom Hardy, Charlie Theron, Nicholas Holt, Hugh Keysburn, Rosie Huntington-Whitley, and Zoe Kravitz. So again, I'm not going to go into a, uh, a deep dive on the film's plot. I mean, at this point, you already know what the film's about. It's been out for nine years. If you really need a summary, just go back and watch and uh you know read the plot summary i mean because like honestly this i mean although i should say if you do want a plot summary here it is tom hardy aka mad max he gets captured by morton joe and his war boys and uh, while escaping he teams up with furiosa and the wives of, of of Immortan Joe and he helps them escape in a uh law in the longest car chase put into cinematic screen yeah yeah again this film again i should note this film is a lot more uh deep than you would expect from a type of summary the film de dives into uh, themes of religion and obsession and issues with uh, resource scarcity especially as it applies to water but yeah this is definitely like the best film of the series if only because it manages to strip away the parts that worked and leave behind the ones that don't basically as I mentioned in my prior reviews, uh, the best sequences of Road Warrior and Thunderdome were the third act action sequences. Now imagine those sequences, but every action sequence in Fury Road is of that quality, if not better. Like, digital effects help this franchise go into the 21st century. I know, I know, there's the whole, oh, you know, they used minimal CGI, whatever the hell that means. Yeah, no, it... There, there's a, there are good YouTube videos pointing out there that the whole, oh, they all did it all practically. No, that's BS. Like, seriously, this film, there are some effects in here that they could not have achieved without digital. The, the night for day sequences in, in the swamp, the desert storm sequence. I mean, how could they not have used digital effects? And yet the sequence still looks stunning to this day. The, the hot reds, the cool blues, it all looks stunning. Like, Seriously, any one of the driving backdrops would make for a good uh, screensaver for for a laptop. Not that this film deserves to be watched on a laptop, but top, but you get the idea. This film looks stunning. The ensemble cast is impressive. Uh, Tom Hardy he slips effortlessly into the role of Mad Max, a, who. I mean, unlike uh, Mel Gibson's portrayal of the character, where he's a bit of a loner just wandering the desert trying to survive. In this film, Max is a full-on feral. Like, even the characters acknowledge as such. Like, this guy is just... his All the parts of the brain that, you know, make us human, that's kind of gone when we first meet him. He is just obsessed. Like, he'll eat a uh, gecko that pops up at the beginning of the movie. He is just, like... Like, he speaks practically in snaps and grunts, and when he chugs water, he chugs it like a feral animal. Like... He is un- Max is at his most mad in this series. Charlize Theron, uh, she pierces the screen with her teal eye gr greens uh, as the Imperator Furiosa, whose determination is matched only by her ill-fated obsession with uh, finding the green place. And if you know how it ends, yeah, it, it's not a good ending in that regard. Nicholas Holt, he disappears into his role as Nux, a, uh, re a religious zealot who's obsessed with going into the gates of Valhalla and, be and being a kamikaze soldier. 
and Hugh Keys Burn, he makes a meal out of his return to the franchise in his show stealing performance as Immortan Joe. Yeah, mediocre! Yeah, he is amazing. Everything from the costume design to just his physicality. Again, just all amazing all around. So thanks to high octane action sequences and unhinged performances, Mad Max Fury Road remains at the peak of action cinema since the day it came out in 2015. So with all that in mind, I will be giving Mad Max Fury Road 5 out of 5 stars. So thank you for watching and have a lovely day!